1020. And we are back with more Ask the Expert. And tonight our expert is Dr. David Levins. Well, we found out you're, you're king of, you know, breast augs and breast lifts and tummy tucks, but you're also, um, you know, very versed in the various lasers out there. So I wanted to pick your brain about how to pick a good laser. Sure. Um, laser is such a, um, uh, a vague term, but I mean, do people do say, you know, I, I thought I could have laser, I want to have laser. So to break it down, it's an energy source. And there are two basic types that are used in plastic surgery. One is a so-called ablative laser, and the others are lasers that are not ablative. So an ablative laser tends to be either an erbium or a CO2 laser, and it all has to do with the frequency and the wavelength. So the wavelength is set for water. And so there's a lot of water in the skin, and so those lasers tend to be ablative. They work right on the surface, they go a little bit below the surface, the energy or the amount of passes is what determines how deep it goes. And the goal there is literally to take away the top le level of the um, epithelium or the epidermis, leaving the underlying dermis, which has um, hair follicles, sweat glands, and all the extra little epithelial cells that are down inside to come up to the surface and heal. So for example, like a burn, equivalent to a, a deep sunburn or equivalent to when you get a burn like a scald, where it's a first, essentially a first degree burn. So it's like a controlled first degree burn. And you know that when you have that, you get a nice pink surface that could take three days, five days, seven days, up to 10 days to come back. The longer it takes to come back, the more risk you run of pigmentary changes, uh, scarring, things like that. So that's an ablative laser. Very good for lines, very good for acne scarring, and but definitely more painful, requires some anesthesia and some downtime. The other types of lasers are non-ablative, and so they target um, either vascular, which would be a red type of laser, or pigment, which would be a brown type, or in between, which would be yellow. So they're targeting, targeting different parts of the wavelength, of the, uh, of, the vis of the wavelength, but they go through the skin. And so when they go through the skin, they leave the skin alone, but then they target the things right underneath the skin, very close to inside the dermis or the lower levels of the epidermis. And those don't tend to um, be as painful they don't tend to be as dramatic in terms of the changes. The most basic of that would be like a photofacial. So a photofacial will address brown spots, red spots, but very, very light treatment, very um, sort of gradual and subtle results and results that need to be repeated and treatments that need to be repeated to get a very dramatic result, but a quicker a lunchtime type of treatment. And uh, those are the non-ablative types of lasers. I have in my office, um, we have something called a sharp light and it has about six or eight different hand pieces. And my esthetician is the one that actually does most of those treatments. When it comes to the ablative, she does something called an erbium YAG. So the erbium is not quite as deep as carbon dioxide, but erbium and YAG, and YAG is another uh, energy, um, and it's, um, it's helpful for the lines not being as deep as you would treat with the carbon dioxide. So she does those treatments herself, actually. And we're talking about a one or two, day recovery or three day at the most, but because it's not as deep, you're not getting as much of a change, then you have to consider repeating it. So for example, someone mm -hmm. who's very deep lines around the mouth, um, will do three of those over the course of like every four to six weeks to try to get uh, as dramatic a change as possible without a big downtime. That's, right. those are, those are, that's pretty much the summary. Oh, I, I didn't even I get to, hair, I didn't even get to hair removal and tattoo removal. I'm sorry. <laughs> we also have okay. hair removal. Yeah, go ahead. Can't you use the, the YAG laser for the tattoo removal? Don't some um, YAG laser, yeah. lasers do for tattoo, for tattoo removal, there's something called a, a, um, a, a ruby, a red ruby uh, laser, and then there's also PicoShore. So these are um, kind of, there's an older and then the newer one is PicoShore. We don't do tattoo removal in our office. With the tattoo removal, you have to be very precise on controlling the, um, the specific wavelength mm -hmm. because depending on the color that's in the tattoo. So um, we, I, I don't, we don't do tattoo removal on our, but we do do laser hair removal. So laser hair removal is done also through uh, non-ablative laser that targets the, um, it targets the uh, pigment in the base of the, of the hair. So that's why darker hair on a lighter skin is more optimal because it targets the pigment and destroys the hair follicle. It's not 
permanent hair removal, it's permanent hair reduction. Kind of like electrolysis, but it, it moves a little quicker and a little less painful than electrolysis. But electrolysis, theoretically, if you really get rid of that hair follicle, it could be totally permanent. So, so what percentage of the hair grows back when you do uh, laser hair removal? Well, there are three phases of hair growth. Um, and depending on what phase you're in at the time of the treatment, the goal is you do about five to six treatments and space them like a month or six weeks apart. And that way you try to get through all the three different phases. And so it could be, you know, certainly after one treatment, it's, it's not that dramatic, maybe 10 or 20%, another treatment, 30, 40, 50%. And then the third or up to six treatment, like 60, 70, 80% reduction. But then, you know, a year later, it doesn't come back the same, but it's something that you might have to keep up with a little bit every year. So yearly you would do a visit? Yes, yeah. I have to, uh, I'm tired of shaving, so maybe I'll come in and see you. Okay. <laughs> too much work. She's excellent. Well, no, absolutely. No, it's a great, it's a great treatment. Yeah, yeah, it's a great treatment. Yeah. Yeah, worth every penny, I'm sure. Just think what you save yeah. in razors. So exactly. I want to go back. Right. So I wanted to go back and ask you, I think I heard you correctly when you said the CO2 laser doesn't take any of your dermis. I thought you also got some dermis loss with that. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It definitely, it definitely takes epidermis and then it does take some of the dermis. So it's a partial loss of dermis. <clears throat> so the dermis is the deeper layer underneath the epidermis. The next layer is fat. If you go completely through the dermis and you're into fat, you're not going to have good healing. You can have scarring, you can have problems. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yes. Most superficial blade of lasers are just into the epidermis and the deeper ones are into the dermis and possibly the deep dermis. You're absolutely yeah. right. But you have I to have preserve. Food. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What well, I was just going to say, you have to preserve in the deeper part of the dermis. You have, well, fat, you definitely have to preserve, but you have to preserve the deeper part of the dermis where the where the hair follicles originate because the the cells on the surface they go down into the hair follicle and they line the hair follicle and so if you were to take away the hair follicles during laser then you don't have the epidermis you don't have the epithelial cells to come back up and repopulate so yeah. it's important how many how many would you do on a person let's say that you you did one treatment for acne scars the patient didn't get a great result you might do another one and then how would that work? I know you have to be careful with CO2. Well, the, the, what you have to be careful with is pigmentary changes, um, scarring, um, and um, absolutely. But it's not unusual. I mean, with deep acne scarring, it's not unusual to require more than one treatment. So you could do one and then, you know, consider maybe six months later another one. Um, and uh, that, I mean, if you want to try to get, I think we've talked about this already. It's, it's you know, it cannot be erased 100%. So you're looking right. for a major improvement, 50%, 60%, 70%, and it often takes more than one treatment, or as we also discussed before, different modalities. So sometimes you have to think about, you know, doing a little uh, removal of an ice pick scar or going underneath a scar that's depressed, because if you are just treating the surface, you're not really getting to deep down inside, and that's where you may need to think about a filler um, or something called subcision, where the um, you pass a, a knife or a or a, uh, um, a, uh, a needle underneath the surface and break up the scar tissue to try to bring the bring it to elevate it. And we talked about lifting also, another option, yeah. actually literally pulling the skin to make acne scars look better. How, how successful is subcision? Uh, mixed. Yeah, mixed. mixed. So you because get 60% improvement? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's hard because, you know, if you have multiple areas, it's just going to be very tedious to go after all those areas. So, I mean, one little localized area is pretty much easy, but that's unusual. I mean, usually it's more of a broad, um, you know, widespread area. So it's a challenge. It used yeah. to be dermabrasion to be the, the main treatment for that. Dermabrasion, which was literally a wheel, like a uh, sanding wheel that was used very bloody, very messy. And uh, I think carbon dioxide laser has pretty much supplanted that uh, mostly just because it's, uh, it's a lot cleaner and, uh, a little bit easier yeah. to control the depth. I did derm full face dermabrasion without any, it's just topical. And I just remember I heard the surgeon or the lady say, oops, and I had a scar the next day. I couldn't figure out, I was like, well, where'd the scar come from? I guess she hit his hand during the procedure. I got some, oh well, I don't know if I got any improvement for, from that. I did two CO2s. The second CO2, I got some improvement for scars. You did? So. 
Okay, yeah, good. I did. The first, the first CO2, I didn't see anything. The second one I saw, yeah. and uh, I think I told you before, I actually had um, a surgeon who used to do um, oxygen and amino acids. So he would have someone come to the house and treat me every day. And so I was wearing makeup by day seven. Well, but that's I was good. still I mean, red. The fact, what's that? You, you were still red. You probably I were red for eight weeks. Eight, eight for weeks. a long time. <laughs> eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yes, well, yeah, at yeah, least no, eight weeks. Uh, yeah, that's a long recovery. But, uh, I was red for six months with dermabrasion. Six months. Oh, even more, with, even more with dermabrasion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. What right? age were you when you had those treatments? What age were you when you had those 20s treatments? Dermabrasion. Twenties with both. Yeah, I was in my twenties yeah. with both. Of them. Well, give folks your contact information real quick. We have to run. Your show is flown by. Okay, good. Uh, Dr. Levins in Coral Springs, 954-752-1020, drlevins.com or Instagram, Dr. David J. Levins. All right, great show tonight, and we'll talk to you again okay. soon, guys. Good evening. Good speaking. Take care. Thanks, Ronnie. Bye.